We just completed talking about position only uh, of points, and now we're going to talk about if we have only orientation. Um, so when we have only orientation, uh, define the orientation of, orientation of an object relative to coordinate frame A, regardless of position. Now, remember, for position, we only had a point. A point, you can define the point in space uh, as a point. But for orientation, the point does not have an orientation. So in this case here, we're going to talk about object. And for an object, we have to define a new frame. We call this new frame, for example, frame B, uh, which is attached to the object. And that would be a requirement so that we can define the orientation of frame B uh, relative to frame A. OK, now if we look at this drawing here, this is frame A, my original frame frame A, I have X, A, Y, A, and Z, A. And then I have a point here on an object. So the first thing I need to do is I need to attach a frame to that point. Okay, so I'm attaching frame B, which has X, B, Y, B, and Z, B uh, into, into point P. All right, now when we talk about position, this vector, as we saw earlier, this vector represents the position of uh, P relative to frame A. Okay, but now we're going to talk about the orientation of P relative to frame A. Okay, now uh, the unit vectors of frame B are XB, YB, and ZB. So each one of these vectors is represented by a vector, and each vector, of course, has three, three components. Just like this vector P has three components, each one of these vectors, XB, YB, and ZB, has also three components. It's a vector. Okay, so we represent these we represent these vectors as x b, y b, and z b. Each one of these is its own vector. Now, when we write these vectors in terms of frame A, this is how we write them. We say x b relative to A. So we put the A as we put it usually. This is the reference frame. We always put it on the left side, uh, upwards. So this is x b relative to A, and then y b relative to A and z b relative to a. Now remember, each one of these vectors has three components, just like any other vector. Okay, so three components here, three components here, and three components here. Now, uh, there's something called rotation matrix. It's a three by three matrix. Uh, we call it rotation matrix. And it can be defined as follows. The symbol for this is r b relative to a. Okay, remember this, r b on the left, lower and a in the top uh, left uh, a is the reference frame and b is what you are describing this the frame that you're describing okay say so r of b relative to a or you can say r a b either either way is fine but we know technically it's called r of b relative to a and what we do is we put this in uh, square brackets which, which represent a uh, matrix and I just put them together here. This is XB relative to A, that's a vector, and then YB relative to A, another vector, and ZB relative to A, another vector. Each one of these uh, vectors is a three by one vector. So if we open this up, we're gonna end up with a three by three matrix, and we call this the rotation matrix, okay? Now, uh, we can also put this in terms of direction cosines, uh, you know, the, the way we describe these elements here is by dot products. So here we have dot product of vector XB times XA, and that would give me R11. And then XB times YA, that would give me R21. And XB times ZA, that would give me R31. So each one of these dot products represent one of these elements. And we can do the same thing for the second column and the third thing for the third column. Okay, so this matrix here is a rotation matrix and it's also called the direction cosines. Now, if we look at this carefully, we can also see that this represents X of A relative to frame B transpose. Okay, and this uh, row here represents Y A relative to frame B transpose. And this third row represents Z A relative to frame B transpose. Okay, now remember, what do we have here? We have XB relative to A as the first column. Here, that row represents XA relative to B transpose. All right, so 
these are related. When you look at this as a column, then you are looking at XB relative to A. And when you look at this as a row, you're looking at XA relative to B transpose. All right? Now, let's recall from linear algebra here. Uh, the inverse of a matrix with orthogonal columns is the same as its transpose. Okay, so this is from linear algebra, which means that the rotation of frame A relative to B is the same as rotation of B relative to A transpose, which is the same as the rotation of B relative to A inverse. Okay, so the transpose and inverse are the same. This is only true for rotation matrix, and the rotation matrix is always orthogonal, has orthogonal columns. Okay, so we can only say this as a true statement for uh, orthogonal column matrices. In this case, rotation matrices are orthogonal columns. Uh, orthogonal means that uh, axes X and Y and Z, all these three axes are at 90 degrees from each other. Okay, so that orthogonality means that uh, rotation matrices are orthogonal, uh, which means that the inverse and the transpose are the same. Okay, so if I have rotation of A relative to B, and I'd like to find a rotation of B relative to A, that means I have to invert it. And inversion is quite an involved process, it's a long process. So here in this case, it makes it easy for me because I can just transpose it, which is the same as the inversion uh, in this case. Okay. So the transpose of the rotation matrix is the same as the inverse of the, uh, of the uh, rotation matrix. Now, uh, when alpha is the angle between the two vectors, like if we have xA here and xB here, and between them there's an angle alpha, then when I do the dot product on these two vectors, xA dot xB, that would be equivalent to the cosine of the angle between these two vectors. Okay, so remember in the previous slide that we had the direction cosines uh, as a rotation matrix. So all these direction cosines are uh, dot products of vectors. So we can replace, the, replace these dot products with the cosine of the angle between these uh, vectors. So if we do that, then we can redefine the rotation matrix as follows. Rotation of B relative to A equals to the cosine of the angle between vector xb and vector xa and then the cosine of the angle between vector xb and ya and then the cosine of the angle between vectors xb and za and then so forth as we can see here so we can replace all these uh, elements of the rotation matrix by actual values of the angle or cosine of the angle between each one of these uh, uh, dot products. Okay, so again, as we said earlier, this matrix is called the rotation matrix, and these elements are uh, the direction cosines, so we can also call this direction cosines matrix. Now let's take an example on uh, orientation. Uh, find the rotation matrix of point P if its frame B is rotated 30 degrees about the z-axis relative to frame A. Okay, so let's first start here by drawing this. Uh, the black uh, frame here, uh, frame A, has XA, YA, and ZA. And then the red frame, frame B, what I have done here, I have drawn, uh, since it's rotation about the Z axis, right? So here we have 30 degrees about Z axis. So Z of frame A and Z of frame B are the same. Okay, and I did rotation about the Z axis by 30 degrees, as you can see here in blue. So that caused XB to deviate away from XA uh, by 30 degrees, and then YB to deviate away from YA by 30 degrees. Okay, so if we start with frame B coincident with frame A, and then we rotate B about ZA by 30 degrees, these will deviate, um, the axis of XB and YB will deviate from XA and YA by 30 degrees. Okay, so this basically clarifies uh, how the rotation happens uh, visually. Now, I can solve this in two different ways. First, I'm going to use the direction cosines method that we just learned about. Okay, so rotation of B relative to A. Again, B is the frame, the new frame for point P, and A is the reference frame. Okay, 
And let's see about this here. So I have cosine 30. So first thing, the first thing here I have was um, x of b relative to a. This whole column, x of b relative to a. Okay. So the first element of this column is x of b relative to x of a. Okay. So this is x of b and this is x of a and the angle between them is 30 degrees, right? So that means the direction cosine tells me that this would be cosine 30 degrees, all right? And then the second element is x of b relative to y a. So this is x of b and this is y a. What's the angle between x b and y a? Of course, you know, from x a to y a is 90 degrees. Since we already have 30 degrees gone here to x b, that means what's left is 60 degrees, okay? So between xb and ya is 60 degrees. So I can replace this and put here cosine 60 degrees. And then the third element here for uh, x of frame b relative to z of frame a. So this is xb, okay, and this is za. And as you can see, there is 90 degree uh, angle between xb and za. Okay, because XB and XA and YA, all of them are in the same plane, and ZA is actually perpendicular to that plane. So there is a 90 degree between XB and ZA. So that means we can put here cosine of the angle between these two vectors, which is cosine 90 degrees. Okay, that ends uh, the, the, the description of XA or XB relative to frame A. Now the second column is YB relative to frame A. The first element of the second uh, column is yb relative to xa. Where's yb? This is yb and this is xa. So the dot product between them is the, the cosine of the angle between them. So let's see what's the angle. So between xa to ya is 90 degrees and then ya to yb is 30 degrees, <clears throat> right? So 90 plus 30, that would be 120. <clears throat> So that makes this cosine is cosine of 120 degrees. And then the second element is the de description of YB relative to YA. This is YB and this is YA. And the angle between them obviously is 30 degrees. Okay, so that means this element is cosine 30 degrees. <clears throat> now, uh, the third element here is describing YB relative to ZA. This is YB and this is ZA. Obviously the angle between them is 90 degrees since YB, X, YB and YA and XB and XA all of them are on the same plane and ZA is uh, perpendicular to that plane. Okay so the angle between YB and ZA is 90 degrees that means this is cosine of 90 degrees. All right now we come here to the third column which is the description of ZB relative to frame A and the first one here is the angle, the cosine of the angle between ZB and XA. This is ZB going up relative, uh, similar to ZA. And the angle between ZB and XA obviously is again 90 degrees. Okay, so that would be cosine of 90 degrees. And then the second element here on the last column is the definition of YB relative to ZA. Again, this is YB, and ZA is obviously 90 degrees from YB, so that would be cosine of 90 degrees. And then the third and last element here is the description of uh, ZB relative to ZA. As you can see here, ZB and ZA are the same line, and the angle between them is zero. Okay, so that makes this cosine of zero. Now, uh, I need to change this to something you know relatively easy that I can remember from directly from the given angle. Uh, the given angle here is 30 degrees, right? So anything here with a cosine or sine of 30 degrees I can leave. So I'm, I'm leaving cosine 30 degrees the way it is and cosine 30 degrees the way it is here. Okay? And then again from uh, you know, the uh, algebraic uh, relationships, we can know that cosine of negative alpha is the same as cosine of alpha, and sine of negative alpha is the same as negative of sine of alpha. 
okay so i can do this and uh, do some uh, complements of angles and then i'll find out that cosine of 120 degrees is the same as negative of sine 30 degrees okay and cosine of 60 degrees is the same as sine of 30 degrees and of course cosine of 90 degrees is zero so i'm just going to put zero here again cosine 90 degrees is zero so i'm going to put zero here all these cosine 90 degrees i'm putting zero and then cosine of zero is one so i'm going to put one right here okay so if you look at this form it's quite easy for me now to remember because it uses the same angle that's the angle uh, given in the question the question here is given 30 degree angle so i can put here cosine 30 negative sine 30 sine 30 and cosine 30 and then 0 0 1 and 0 0 here okay so this makes it easier for me instead of having so many angles and too much analysis to analyze and figure out what these angles are okay um, now the positive rotation has to be always according to the right hand rule uh, we need to remember this so if we are talking about 30 degree angle rotation about the z-axis what I need to do is I need to put my thumb along the direction of the z-axis and then rotate the rest of my uh, four fingers uh, in, in, in the right way. So that would give me the positive direction of rotation for x, b, and y, b. Okay. So make sure whenever you do the rotation, you have to take this uh, in context of uh, the right hand rule. Now. <clears throat> If I want to do this again using instead of direction cosines, I just want to use projection method. What I can do is I can draw this in 2D. Since this is rotation only about Z, I can just look at the top view of this and just draw the X and Y. Uh, in this case, the Z will be coming out of the screen. Okay. So when I rotate about the Z axis of A, this XB is going to rotate 30 degrees and YB will rotate 30 degrees from YA. Okay, so all I have to do is just I have to do the projection. So I need to define XB relative to XA, YA, and ZA. And then I have to define YB relative to XA, YA, and ZA. All right, so again, when I do the projection, I have dots here. So I'm defining XB first. And XB basically is the length from the original frame A all the way up to this projection of this point where the green line is. And that distance here that distance here is the cosine of 30 degrees that you see right here. Okay, so that's the distance along the x-axis of A. All right, now similarly, the projection of XB onto YA is distance to distance from the origin to this point, this green line, and that defines uh, the distance as sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so if we look at this, this is the uh, definition of uh, XB relative to A. That's what's here. So the first projection about XA is, we said right here, cosine of 30 degrees, which I put right here. And then the second projection is the projection of this on the Y, YA, and that is sine of 30 degrees, which I put right here. And of course, the third projection is XB on the ZA, which will project into the zero point at ZA, uh, which is coming out of the screen. Okay, so that will have no length, which means it's going to be zero. Now, if I want to define YB, okay, again, I'll project this onto XA and YA and ZA. So if I project this into XA, as you can see, it's going to come into the negative direction of XA by this amount. And this length here would be sine of 30 degrees, that length right here. So I'm going to put this as negative sine 30 degrees because it's in the negative direction of XA. And then the projection of this onto YA, again, it's right here. And this length from here to the green line is cosine of 30 degrees. So I can put this in here, cosine of 30 degrees. And then the projection of YB into ZA, again, uh, ZA is coming out of the screen. So the length of the projection will be zero. So I put zero here. Now the last column here is a projection of ZB relative to frame A. And as you can see, both ZB and ZA are coming out of the screen. They are the same line. So the projection of that line into XA will be zero. So I put here zero. And the projection of this line into YA is zero. And I put zero here. 
And then the projection of uh, ZB into ZA, since they are the same line, that projection will be one, uh, which is, you know, uh, the length of the line is a unit length. So that makes it one right here. Okay. Now, if we compare this to this, they are the same matrix. Okay. Same answer, same matrix. We found it in two different ways. Uh, probably most of us are used to the projection method to find the rotation matrix. But now we have the direction cosines method as well that we can find the projection matrix with. Now let's take an in-class exercise where I want you to solve this on your own. Find the rotation matrix of point P if its frame B is rotated 30 degrees about the x-axis relative to frame A. Okay? And I put this here for your reference uh, so you can uh, take the direction cosines and uh, you can first draw this and then find the rotation matrix. I'm going to pause here for a few seconds, so please pause the video and work on this on your own. And then once you are done, you can resume the video uh, to see the answer. Okay, now I'm assuming that you all have the answer um, uh, finished up here. So I'm going to display the answer to you here. Uh, this is rotation about x-axis, so the x-axis of B and A are the same. And then right hand rule, uh, we did the rotation about x axis by 30 degrees. So my thumb is on the x axis. With my right hand rule, uh, I'm most rotating y, b, and z, b uh, 30 degrees relative to frame a. Okay, so this is how we draw this. And then the solution for the rotation matrix, rotation of b relative to a equals to this quantity here. Okay, after you simplify everything, it will be 1, 0, 0, the first row, and 1, 0, 0, the first column. And then the remainder here is cosine 30 minus sine 30, and sine 30, cosine 30. Let's take another in-class exercise here. Uh, and I want you guys to do this on your own again. Uh, find the rotation matrix of point P if its frame B is rotated 30 degrees above the y-axis relative to frame A. And again, I put here the uh, rotation matrix, uh, the direction cosines matrix as well here, so that you can uh, make it as a reference. So I want you guys to draw this and solve it on your own. Uh, pause the video. I'm going to just, you know, pause for a few seconds, but you can pause the video, do that homework or, or the class exercise on your own. Once you're done, you can resume and see the answer uh, right in this video. Okay, now you're you you know you're done with the answers. I'm gonna show you the uh, answer to the que this question or exercise. So here we have rotation about YB. So YB and YA are the same line, and then the right hand rule according to the right hand rule, if we put our thumb in the Y direction, YB and YA direction, uh, then ZB and Z and XB will be going uh, as you see right here by 30 degrees. Okay. And if we do this uh, with the direction cosines, we're going to find out that the rotation matrix looks like this. Uh, it's a little different from uh, R about X and R about Y, uh, R about Z. Um, and we're going to see a summary of all three of these rotations uh, in the next slide. Okay, but this is how this looks like and make sure it, it matches what you have uh, in the exercise when you solved it. Now I want to summarize all these primary rotation matrices about X, Y, and Z uh, that we have taken earlier. So this is rotation about X by gamma degrees that describes frame B relative to A. Okay, and what we see here, since the rotation is about X, then the first element in this, uh, in this matrix would be one. And then the remainder elements along the, the same uh, row and the same column will all be zeros. Okay, and what remains is cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine of that angle. It's always in this form. And then when we look at the y, we have rotation about y by beta degree that would describe frame B relative to frame A. Okay, and since the rotation is about y, that means the second element here in the, uh, in the uh, diagonal uh, elements would be 1. And then the remainder of 
elements in the same row and the same column will be zeros. And what's left is cosine, sine, negative sine, and cosine of that beta angle. And then the third rotation is rotation about z by alpha degrees that describes frame B relative to frame A. Okay, and since the rotation is about z, that means the last element in that diagonal uh, elements will be 1. And then the remainder elements along the same row and same column would be zeros. Uh, what's left is cosine, negative sine, and sine and cosine. Now I want you to make some relations here. If you can see this block of 4 by 4 and this block of 4 by 4, they're exactly the same, but they're in different locations. So when the rotation about x, the one is up here, the top left, and these 4 by 4 will be on the bottom right, and the negative sign will be on the top right of these 4 by 4 block. When you have rotation about z, you have the one in the lower right, and then these 4 by 4 block elements on the top left, and the negative sign still on the top right of this 4x4 four four block. Now the y here is a little different. Again, the same thing, we have still 1 here in the middle and 0, 0, 0, 0 in the re remainder elements of the uh, row and column. But here we have cosine, sine, and negative sine and cosine. If you think about these four elements again as a block, the negative is in the lower left side of these four elements. Here it was in the top right, and here's in the top right of these four elements, but here it's in the lower left of these elements. Okay, so just make sure that you notice this difference and you don't get mistaken when you try to recall these matrices. So I put this note here for your uh, consideration and make sure you recognize uh, that the y is a little different from uh, rotation about z and x.